Wow. Sony. It's like they made this PS4 specifically to kill Microsoft off. They made this PS4 specifically to make Microsoft look even more of an asshole. I gotta say, when it comes to the E3s, Sony sometimes can be a little boring. And that's one thing Microsoft's always had over Sony is that they know how to entertain. But Sony, in the end, always prevails. First, uh, Jack Trenton came out being boring, talking about the Vita, games available for the Vita, talking about Skype looks beautiful on the Vita. Skype? Skype looks beautiful on the Vita. That's a selling point. <laughs> then, of course, they showed The Last of Us. Um, they had this game called Puppeteer. Didn't really care about that. Had a game called Rain, where you got Coney and the Invisible Children. And the only way you can see them is when the rain hits them and everything. You got a Beyond Two Souls, starring Ellen Page. And it's got great graphics. Kind of looks like it's going to replace Metal Gear and the you know, whole stealth thing. Since Metal Gear has gone open world, this is sort of, you know, back to what Metal Gear Solid is kind of like. Except it has Ellen Page in it. Of course, Gran Turismo 6, you know, I'm not too big into racing games. I'm more of a Mario Kart type player. Um, then they showed Batman Arkham Origins, and they showed exclusive content, like an exclusive map and exclusive skins that will be available for the PS3 or PS4, whichever one. I forget which one it was. I didn't exactly hear which one they was going to have the exclusive content for, but probably for both. They also announced a GTA 5 bundle for the PS3. And that's going to basically just have, uh, you know, I think a skin for the PS3. And it's like $299. What to do? On to the PS4. They finally showed what it looks like. And it generally looks like a... It kind of looks like a sleek logo, like a 3D logo of some sort. It doesn't necessarily look like a console. It doesn't necessarily look like a cable box. It just... I can't even describe it. It's just a sleek box that's slanted and skewed. I'm not sure what they're going to make for the slim because it's already pretty slim and sleek. What could they possibly do to improve upon that? Won't make it smaller, of course, but... I don't think we're going to see many revisions of this. Um, they have Video Unlimited and Music Unlimited, which allows you to basically stream music and video, uh, not just on your PS3 or on your PS4, but on other devices like iPhones, iPads, and other stuff. And Androids as well. I don't really care about that too much. They talked about Flickster, Redbox, Instant Video, whatever. And then they got to some more games here. They got the Santa Monica Studios game called The Order, which is an exclusive. And it looked like some kind of four-player co-op demon hunting game. I think there were werewolves that they were hunting or something. I don't know. Looked okay. Looked all right. Didn't really get to see any gameplay. Just simply in-game cinematics. Then they had the Killzone Shadowfall gameplay. No, not too much to say about that. It's Killzone. It's a first-person shooter. What do you think it looks like? It looks like you're running around shooting people. Then they show Drive Club. They don't really care about that. Now, Infamous Second Son. That looks awesome. I've always been a big fan of the Infamous series. And this one looks like you're going to have more freedom. The graphics are amazing. I do like the characters as well. And just the moves this guy's pulling off, teleporting and everything, it's going to be freaking awesome. That's going to be a day one purchase for me. I will be getting a PS4. They show the Nat game that they announced before. <clears throat> then they show this Dark Sorcerer thing. Now the thing is with this is that it showed great emotion and great graphics. But overall, they still didn't show us what the game actually was. So I can't really say that the reveal for the Dark Sorcerer was even a big deal. Then they show something called the Transistor. This is by the same people who did the... Um, the I was going to say Dark Bastion. 
I don't know, I'm thinking Kingdom Hearts right now, but The Bastion. You guys have seen the game on the PC, but Sony basically brought these indie developers up, and they're giving them the spotlight. They're giving indie developers a chance to come out there and show everyone what they're capable of. Now, as you can clearly see, Microsoft has a chokehold on indie developers. They got them by the balls on the Xbox One. Microsoft doesn't care about the indie developers on the Xbox One, but Sony, on the other hand, they're putting out the red carpet for the indie developers. They're inviting indie developers straight into the PS4, allowing them to not only get their own spotlight, but they can self-publish their games. <clears throat> and the transistor by the people who did Bastion, it looks amazing. I can't wait to get my hands on that game. I don't know whether or not the game's gonna be exclusive or not, but whatever platform is gonna be on, whether it be PC or PS4, I'm gonna get it. Uh, let's see. They also show Don't Starve, which is on PC. Uh, Mercenary Kings, Octodad, Dadliest Dad, uh, a game called Ray. So they went through some of these games so fast, I didn't get a chance to really, you know, type some of the stuff down. A game called Outlast, which is like a horror game. Kind of like, kind of remind me of a modern day Amnesia Dark Descent game. Looks like it's going to be pretty good. They have a full remake of the Oddworld game called uh, Oddworld New and Tasty. That's of course going to be good. They showed this game called Galaxy, which is like a side-scrolling, um, side-scrolling space shooter. So it's basically, what was that game called? Uh, it's basically Stardust but a side-scrolling game. They also talked about Diablo 3, which is, of course, DRM-free. PC version, we couldn't even get that, which is disappointing. But they also have exclusive content for the PS3 version. You hear that, Microsoft? I've already talked about several games that are multi-platform for the PS4, and guess what? Exclusive content that no other platform will ever see. Not timed exclusive, but real exclusive content. And then holy shit. Holy shit. Final Fantasy 15. Oh god. It looked magnificent. We've waited all this time for Final Fantasy 13 Versus. And now, that win is finally going to pay off. If you did not see the gameplay footage of Final Fantasy 15, go to YouTube right now. I already know it's already up there. Go watch it. That right there is your reason to buy a PS4. But not only that, but Square Enix. Look, I hated Square Enix. I hated their guts, but now I'm loving them. I really am loving them. Final Fantasy 15 and then Kingdom Hearts 3. Kingdom Hearts 3. I swear to God, Square Enix, it's like it's like you've been hearing all these complaints after all this time and you're finally getting your head out of your ass. Now, I'm not entirely sure whether that Kingdom Hearts 3 is a PS3 or PS4 exclusive. You know, let me just Google search that real quick. Because unlike other people, I don't mind taking a few seconds just to confirm some information. Well, from what I'm seeing so far, it looks like it was only announced for the PS4. There's no talks of it being an exclusive title. So, there's a rumor in PlayStation Magazine that Kingdom Hearts 3 would be a exclusive to the PS3 or PS4 or whatever, but I think that was from a while ago. So right now, it's not set in stone whether that's an exclusive. But the fact that Kingdom Hearts 3 is in development is gold. 
this needed to be done a long time ago. And I swear to God, I swear to God, if you do not have a Wreck-It Ralph World Kingdom Hearts 3, I'll be so pissed, but at the same time, I'm still going to be happy and content because it's Kingdom Hearts 3. And the trailer they showed for it looked amazing. Let me pull my outline back up here. Then they showed Assassin's Creed Black Flag, which looked freaking amazing. And all I could think of the entire time they're playing this footage and actually playing the game on the on the stage was I wanted to play One Piece music behind it. That's all I wanted to do. Now it was just the point that the game crashed, you know, mid game, but you know that's gonna happen. It's still in development. Nothing's gonna work perfectly. They showed a game called Mad Max with exclusive content for the PS4. Um, they, uh, they came out and said they have more than 140 titles currently in development for the PS4. That's freaking awesome. So when you get your PS4, you're going to have a slew of games that you can play. Now Xbox One, not so much. And the PS4 supports used games, which we already expected that. And the um, it doesn't require a connection to play games online or offline. No 24-hour check-ins. Man, this sounds like a console made for gamers. Hmm. It's very strange, this concept of good business practices Microsoft but sadly here is the big cog in the wheel here here is the wrench in the gears and they were so slick with the way they released this information he kinda of stumbled over it to where people really didn't realize it but I was listening I heard everything you said Pay to play online. You have to have PlayStation Plus in order to play your games online multiplayer. Sony is going to make you pay to play games online. Now, I'm not as pissed off about that as I was for Xbox Live because with PlayStation Plus, you make your money back. They give you free full retail games for free with PlayStation Plus. So you make your money back more than three times fold. But regardless though, I don't like the business practice of making people to pay to play online. They also have, you know, cross game chat. You can play games as they're being downloaded, which is pretty cool. Uh, there's a share button we can upload to Ustream. And of course, your PlayStation Plus carries over to PS4. They show the Destiny gameplay. Destiny kind of looks like Halo 4 meets futuristic. You know, I know it's kind of weird to say, but they kind of made Halo 4 more futuristic, mystical. Kind of, it's kind of weird, you know, the style of it. And it looks more like a Borderlands type game as well, which I do, I do enjoy. I do enjoy Borderlands. So I will be picking up Destiny. They showed Gaikai, where basically it's a cloud gaming service for Vita, PS4, PS3 that allows you to stream PS3 games to all three devices. That's pretty cool. And the PS4 is releasing at $399. Now let's get this straight. Even though you have to pay to play online, in the end, it's still a way better value than Xbox Live. And not only that, but the PS4 is more powerful than the Xbox One. And the PS4 has more value overall than the Xbox One. And it's a hundred dollars cheaper? Straight up murder. <laughs> Sony straight up murdered Microsoft. Absolutely slit their throat. <laughs> and they did not mind calling out Microsoft on stage. 
Sony, my hat's off to you. And you will have my money. You will have my money. You will have my banking account. You will have my credit cards. You will have my IOUs. You have all my money. I'm happy with the PS4, besides having to pay to play online. But overall, I will be getting one. Thank you, Sony. Thank you for showing Microsoft what it takes to make gamers happy. You gamers, you all have a good day. Today was a triumphant day. This was a victory for gaming and gamers. Get a PS4.